Hello, and welcome to the Student Growth Insights into Linear Regression and the Illinois State Growth Model. This presentation is offered by ECRA Group, an approved Illinois Empowered Professional Learning Partner, as a resource to Illinois schools, districts, and other professional learning partners to help plan for the student growth component of the Illinois Consolidated State Plan under the Every Student Succeeds Act. This presentation provides information as to how the Illinois State Board of Education may implement linear regression as a means to measure student growth under the new School Improvement and Accountability System. It is important to note that there are many important details that, as of the date of this recording, have not been published by ISBE. Therefore, there are uncertainties as to how ISBE will ultimately utilize linear regression as a tool to measure student growth. Please check back regularly to this post as it will be updated as new information becomes available. So why measure student growth? While most educators, researchers, and policymakers would agree that raising proficiency levels of students is the long-term goal of schools, its sole use as a school improvement and accountability metric is inadequate. To scientifically and equitably assess improvement efforts, one must focus on measuring student growth, not aggregate improvements in proficiency. Focusing school improvement and school accountability on student growth overcomes two major challenges often cited with the use of proficiency rates to judge school improvement efforts. First, Measuring growth at the student level removes confounding factors attributed to different groups of students, demographic shifts, cohort effects, differential standards across grade levels, etc., that create variation in proficiency rates unrelated to school performance. And second, many school improvement efforts target students that are well below or well above proficiency standards, making it likely that proficiency rates will remain unchanged despite significant improvements. For these reasons, the distinction between growth and proficiency is gaining national attention for policymakers and shifting best practices. Researchers and policymakers now recognize that student growth is a more equitable approach to assessing improvement efforts. As a result, student growth has become a significant factor in the school improvement and accountability system in Illinois. Under the new ISBE accountability framework, student growth will contribute 50% to a school's quality rating. This is a radical shift from prior policies and will require schools to be more sophisticated in how they monitor individual student progress. Initially, Illinois will measure student growth in grades 4 through 8. Graduation rate will take the place of student growth at the high school level. However, student growth may expand to the high school level in future years. While numerous statistical approaches exist to measure student growth, nearly all approaches are anchored to the same conceptual framework. Student growth, sometimes referred to as an effect size, is defined as the gap between a student's actual score on an assessment compared to a projected or expected score for the student given their prior performance. For example, Based on a student's PARC score in 2017, a projection or growth expectation for a student's PARC score in 2018 can be established. One can then measure the degree to which a student grew by measuring the distance between their projected and actual score. Competing approaches for measuring student growth are distinguished by the methodology used to establish projections or expectations, along with the methodology used to measure the distance between a student's projected score and their actual score. Linear regression is the methodology chosen by ISBE to establish growth projections and expectations and to produce growth scores. The process for measuring student growth and linking student growth into an accountability system starts with administering assessments. Initially, growth will be measured using PARC data in grades 3 through 8. In the future, growth may expand to the high school level using the SAT suite of assessments. Once students are administered assessments and scores are produced, the process for measuring growth is focused on connecting individual student assessment scores over time at the individual student level to quantify the change or growth that has occurred. This is where linear regression is utilized. Let's take a deeper look. According to the approved Illinois Consolidated State Plan under ESSA, ISBE proposes to utilize linear regression, i.e. current test scores are regressed on last year's test scores to compute student academic growth in grades 3 through 8. While there are many details left out of the document, one can glean some insight into the direction that ISBE is headed given their choice of linear regression. One side note, however, is that while the document indicates growth will be measured in grades 3 through 8, it will most likely be measured in grades 4 through 8 as grade 3 will be needed as the baseline to measure growth in grade 4. The ISBE document states that current scores are regressed on last year's scores to compute student academic growth. Linear regression starts by plotting a student's score this year which in this example is grade 6 Park Math score in 2017, that's the y-axis, versus his or her last year's score, which in this example is grade 5 Park Math score 2016 for the same student, that's the x-axis. We can plot a second student to the same graph, and a third student. We can continue to plot students on the same graph. Ultimately, we can continue to plot all students across the state. 
Remember, the students plotted are only students that have the current year's PARC score and last year's PARC scores. A student that's missing a score would not be included in the analysis. Once all students across the state are plotted, we can apply linear regression. Linear regression indicated by the gray line establishes a projected score for the current year based on a student's prior score the previous year. The linear regression equation is used to set the projection. In this example, for each grade 5 PARC score, a unique projection for grade 6 is produced. The gray line, or linear regression, provides a mechanism to project a student's PARC score for the current year based on his or her PARC score the previous year. Each starting PARC score in grade 5 would have a different projected score for grade 6. It is called linear regression because the relationship between the current year scores and the previous year scores is assumed to be linear. If ISBE develops the linear regression model using all students in Illinois, the projected score for each student takes on the following definition. The score needed to demonstrate growth consistent with the average growth of similar students across the state, similar meaning students that had the same baseline or starting score. With this approach, each student's PARC score for the current year is compared to all other students across the state who had the same previous year's PARC score. Once we have a projected score, we can measure how far a student's actual score is from their projected score derived from the linear regression. The distance between a student's projected score and their actual score provides the raw metric to express student growth. This particular example represents a student who showed higher than expected growth as their score is above the linear regression line. A separate linear regression growth model will likely be established for ELA and math within grade level. Here is an example of a student that showed lower than expected growth since their actual score is below the linear regression line. It's unknown how ISBE will ultimately express the distance between actual and projected achievement. The most commonly applied methodology is to standardize the distance as a z-score. Using a z-score is advantageous as it provides a standardized measure that can be averaged across all grades and subjects to produce a single growth score for a building or other groups of students. Let's take a look at how growth differs from proficiency and how patterns of growth and proficiency may affect school quality ratings. This scatter plot overlays the PARC proficiency benchmark with the linear regression growth model. Examination of this graph reveals the main difference between proficiency and growth. You will notice that the PARC proficiency benchmark is a horizontal line and represents the score needed to meet the state proficiency standard. Furthermore, the horizontal benchmark line reflects the nature of proficiency in that all students are expected to have the same or higher PARC score in grade 6, in this case 750, regardless of their score in grade 5. Previous policies under NCLB only considered proficiency. In contrast, the gray line represents growth via linear regression. The non-horizontal slope of the linear regression reveals that the score expected of a student in grade 6 depends on their score in grade 5. Let's look at a sample school, School A. Since the dots on the scatter plot represent individual students, and collectively all students across the state, a subset of dots could come from a particular school. For example, the orange dots could come from all students of School A. Focusing only on the students from School A shows that while all students are below the proficiency benchmark, all students are above the linear regression growth model. This is an example of a school with lower proficiency rates, which would have been rated poorly under previous policies, receiving a more favorable rating under ESSA given its strong student growth. In this example, School A would receive a low score for the 25% of the accountability framework that deals with proficiency, but would receive a high score for the 50% of the accountability framework that deals with growth. The opposite is also possible. School B has all of its students above the proficiency benchmark, but all of its students below the linear regression growth model. Under the new accountability framework, School B would receive a high score for the 25% of the accountability framework that deals with proficiency, but a low score for 50% of the accountability framework that deals with growth. Once each student receives a growth score using linear regression as previously described, a methodology to summarize growth for groups of students or school must be established. At the time of this recording, the methodology used to summarize growth for groups of students has not been published by ISBE. Therefore, it is uncertain as to the exact methodology that ISBE will use to summarize growth at the building level. That said, developing a growth score for a group of students starts at the individual student level. Based on a student's prior score, a projected score is produced. The difference between a student's projected and actual score produces a raw growth score. Raw growth scores are typically standardized, sometimes via z-scores, 
to arrive at a growth score that is comparable across all subjects and grade levels, allowing for a single growth summary score to be produced for a building or group of students. You may notice that a student's projected PARC score is lower than their starting PARC score. Linear regression does not require scores to be on the same scale. This is a beneficial property of linear regression, as PARC scores in Illinois are not reported on a vertically articulated scale. Therefore, it is likely that linear regression will produce projected PARC scores that are lower than starting PARC scores for some students. This is okay, as growth is defined as the distance between a projected and actual score for the current year. A variety of approaches exist to summarize student growth for groups of students. Average growth, the percentage of students that met or exceeded their projected score, or the percentage of students within a desired confidence band are prevailing approaches. Once a summary measure of student growth is derived, it will be compared to accountability thresholds to link into the accountability system. There is limited information available at the time of this recording as to how points will be awarded to various levels of student growth. That said, ISBE is likely to categorize growth and award points to various categories, which can then be combined with other components of the evaluation framework beyond growth. Existing publications suggest growth is likely to be on a 0 to 100 point scale. Growth will likely be categorized by comparing summarized growth to growth thresholds to determine whether growth is higher than expected, expected, lower than expected, or unsatisfactory, although these labels will likely be different. There are also documents published by ISBE that suggest growth will be reported as a letter grade of A through F to capture a school's growth compared to schools with similar local contexts. Thank you for listening. Should you have any questions related to student growth, linear regression, or how ECRA Group can assist your school or district through the Illinois Empower Network, please email il-empower at ecragroup.com. Please check back regularly to this blog post as it will be updated as new information is published. Also, if you would like your school or district's park data run through ECRA's Illinois Linear Regression Model, please contact us for details. Thank you.